Hey folks, I'm Lance Eaton, and in this short session, we're going to talk about five tips about using a generative AI with students. So let's get started. So here are the five tips we're going to go over, and we'll kind of jump into each of those for a little bit of a discussion and talk about some examples. And then, of course, uh, that bonus tip there, that link is to a resource document that includes a variety of prompts, uh, resources, a slide deck to another video that I recently did on a very similar subject. Really, it's just a great resource to go back to after you've watched this and want to grab some things that I was talking about. It will be in the description below uh, and by all means, make, make use of it as much as it's helpful. So let's talk about our first tip. The first is abstinence is not an option. Abstinence has never been a great strategy. It didn't work for prohibition, the war on drugs, or abstinence-only sex education. It's not going to work for generative AI. This means that we have to learn about it, play with it, and yes, think about it in our classes. Banning it or dismissing it is not going to do, isn't going to do a thing other than delegitimize ourselves to our students. And that's already something that higher ed is doing in boatloads. So this doesn't mean you can't shouldn't have guardrails. You absolutely should. You should have clarity about how it may or can show up in your course, and you want to talk about it and surface concerns in interesting use cases with your students. But do not avoid it. Prepare ways of how you might engage with it and even help students critically examine it. But avoiding it is like trying to ban Wikipedia in the late 2000s. One framework that I've been thinking about a lot and it's that we need to work with and to uh, work to help our students understand what is what I call the two bucket challenge. So AI, it's, it's great that it can produce content, but that's also its biggest concern. And there's one definitive fact that we know about generative AI for the foreseeable future. It calculates the probability of responses, but it does not know the answers. It does not have a grounded knowledge like humans do. Therefore, in order to use it well, like really well, like the kind that makes it useful is that users need two buckets. The first bucket is a working understanding of how generative AI works, its limitations, its capabilities, its biases, and how it fits together in the larger cultural landscape of late stage capitalism. That's essential to knowing what it is and isn't, can and can't do. But more importantly, it's sifting through all of those promises, and there's so many promises out there, of a lot of tech bros in Silicon Valley. We can't anthropomorphize it and give, it over, give over our agency to it. We have to understand it well enough to know what it can't do. The second bucket is a deep knowledge of the subject matter that you're working with it on. It just doesn't know things. It only calculates responses, and that can only get one so far. So when it comes to disciplinary knowledge, it still falls drastically short. Yes, it can produce facts, but it can't often produce knowledge. So anything we can do to help students learn and experience, uh, to, to learn this and experience this on a deep level is important and essential. It's important for them to understand how and where best to deploy generative AI and how it can be how they can use it best for their learning. And this is where I, you know, I think this is the real possibility of how higher ed can do well and do better by our students is really helping draw out that understanding of like, to use it well, you need to understand how it works. And you actually need to know the thing that you're trying to do with it. Without those two buckets, you're just not going to be able to operate it well. Okay. So one means that we can help students with that two bucket challenge is to often employ a lot of red teaming in our teaching and learning around generative AI. So what is red teaming? Uh, you may have heard this in relation to the military, hacking, or even journalism. The goal of a red team is to work hard to find the weaknesses in something, right? That traditional devil's advocate, but a very intentional, methodical devil, devil's advocate, not just the uh, troll pretending to be a devil's advocate. So with regards to AI, the goal is to have students be red teams to figure out and determine what is accurate, right, or problematic with AI outputs. And of course, you can do this in several ways. First, as an instructor, uh, so first as an instructor, you can 
continually bring in examples or embed them through the course to get students to see if they can discover, discover if you've used it or discover the, the problems with it and what kind of cr critiques, concerns can they bring as they are surfacing what may or may not be AI. You can also have students create content with generative AI, maybe even an assignment, you know, assignment submissions that must, that actually must be first vetted and critiqued by other students for questionable AI content. So this is, you actually have students like, yes, go and create something that's like part generative AI, part, you know, part student or part group. And it actually has to be vetted. It has to be passed. They have to, you know, pass the, 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 the red team test. And then finally, you can challenge students to go out into the wild, explore blogs, social media, and other content that might be course related to determine or make assessments of why something is or isn't generative AI and how that impacts the, our understanding, willingness, or desire to engage with that particular content. So in doing this, there's actually really some great benefits. The first is that they actually begin to learn and see patterns in AI outputs to which they can, which can make them more sus suspect or just discern more about how and where and why to use generative AI, right? So being able to pattern build to really see that kind of like style that we often see with generative AI or different types of generative AI, and then also just making them more questioning, more suspect of information, which is something we're always looking for, that information literacy, right? So it's also an incredible way of building critical thinking. And it's one of those things that I can, uh, I think can come out of all of this, out of all of this, is that we become even more critical of everything we encounter rather than less. So what are some practices uh, that we want to encourage or discourage as we actually use generative AI? Well, Rather than resist or find ways to keep students from using it, consider how you might not only have them use it, but what could come from it. So the first is that you can encourage them to cite and link to the chat log so that you can actually see and learn what they are using and how they are using this. I think to me, I've, I've started to do this and I really like this because um, I want them to try to like put together stuff that's from AI in themselves, but I also just want to see how they're using it and what they're taking from it. That provides a really good exploration into metacognition, into how they're making sense of information. But you can also lean into encouraging students to use it as a means of just refining their work, improving the style, the clarity, the ideas. Uh, you can have them work through a few prompts to help them clarify their ideas or proposal, their main idea, research question, whatever. Um, and again, they can share that chat log to help you get a better sense of, you know, where the work has been supported by AI, where they have changed the work. And that too becomes a learning experience. Like, why did you make this choice over that choice? What, you know, what drove you for to, to do it this way? Um, but where I think it gets really interesting is when you develop and have students use prompts that turn generative AI into an interviewer. This is where I think the real magic can happen. The AI as interviewer means students will be engaging in dialogue that allows them to share their ideas and for the AI to keep asking them questions to help figure things out. So this is again where you flip that square script. You have the AI become the one asking the pro asking the questions and the, you know, the, the students, the ones figuring out things and sharing those types of insights. I think where this could be really powerful, a really helpful space is around reflection. Reflection is a practice and it takes time to develop for, for many of us. Even when we love it, it takes a while. And so for many students, they often stumble when it comes to reflection. They offer what we would consider superficial responses than what we might be hoping to see, you know? And, you know, through this, there's an opportunity to create an AI, an AI reflection prompt that digs deeper into the students' responses and can help them become better at reflection. Rather than trying to do it with a blank page and probably fudge their way through it, the chat log can actually demonstrate how the student dug deeper with appropriate nudges from AI. And this is where I think it's really helpful is we know that reflection process for early folks often requires somebody there asking the follow-up question, asking the deeper question. Well, why did you feel that way? Well, why did you make that selection? But it can be hard because the way that, you know, we're often looking at reflection and assignments is they submit the reflection and then we get to review it. So finding, using an AI tool as that in-between could actually really enhance what we, what students are able to reflect upon and build that muscle a little bit more quickly. 
So here's an example of turning an AI into an interviewer. Now keep in mind, this is not the full prompt that's in the resource, but it should give you a sense of what it looks like. So here I'm saying, you know, you're an AI assistant designed to help students develop their project ideas through a series of thoughtful questions. Your role is to guide the student in exploring their interests uh, it's exploring their interests, refining their ideas, and formulating a thesis and outline in their project. Remember, your primary function is to ask questions and encourage the student to provide answers rather than offering direct suggestions or solutions. So again, using a prompt like this where they actually, you know, you're telling the AI, this is your role, this is how I want you to go about, uh, and then actually having the student go through for a round of questions and share that chat log. Here's using AI as a reflection tool. You're an AI assistant designed to help students reflect deeply. Your role, ask probing questions that encourage students to think critically about their learning journey, challenges, achievements, and personal growth. Primary function, ask questions and gently push for more substantial responses, right? So really trying to turn that, that chat space into a place where students can grow and respond back to how or what the, the uh, generative AI is asking. All right, last tip. This next tip is, uh, is for forward thinking folks but also folks who think a lot about building learning spaces together and being in community with students and leveraging transparency. It's not, as, it's not as easy a lift, but it's one that I think can be the most powerful way to step into really thinking about generative AI in education. Even as AI stands now, it, it's not likely, sorry, it is likely to have a lot of impact on most disciplines. But the question is how and in what ways is it going to show up in different industries and disciplines? So that could actually be the course itself, working with students to study, explore, and test out what exactly, what specific skills, knowledge, and abilities are needed in a given discipline, given the current understanding and abilities of generative AI. And this can happen in several ways. The first is, of course, you can have this as an ongoing conversation in your course that you regularly return to. Every two weeks, you know, you have a 15 minute conversation based on what we've learned, based on what you're learning about AI, based on the world. Like, how does this relate? How do we think about this? What skills, knowledge, and ability do we need to use AI in this field? Another is just dedicated class time to actively experimenting and sharing insights about how it operates in the field. So again, this could be a little bit of a laboratory space where this can be both bringing in examples and trying things out. You could also just make this an assignment within the course where actually they work on throughout the course, how does this fit? Where does this fit? What is their understanding based on research, based on using, based on what they know about the discipline? And then finally, and this is the most ambitious, you can actually do it as the entire co-created course with students where you find your way through the course. That last, you know, this last one um, is the one that I think about is probably the hardest and yet could yield the most results and would benefit all students and instructors. Because even if the answer is no or limited or, you know, the, even if the answer I would say is quote unquote wrong or it leads to dead ends, you're still deeply working within the discipline and its ideas and its knowledge, skills, and abilities that your students are going to be better at that particular, you know, in that particular domain than they were before, regardless of whatever we're talking about with AI. Um, it also becomes this really rich opportunity to consider for like publishing and presenting with those students about what you're doing. So it's this really cool collaborative space that could create future opportunities for you and your students. All right, those are my five tips. I hope this, this is helpful. I hope you got some great ideas. If you have questions, throw them in the comments feature or just reach out to me. Thank you so much.